This is an example of a Venn diagram involving both a sum claim and an all claim. Now, when doing a Venn diagram, you of course have a categorical syllogism. In this case, or as in all cases, it's an argument consisting of two premises and a conclusion. In the case of a categorical syllogism in standard form, each of the claims is a categorical claim in standard form. And this condition, of course, has been met. Now, in order to do the diagram, we have to know the following stuff. First, we have to know what the premises are, which are already labeled here for us. We have to know what the conclusion is, which is also here. Next, we have to know what our terms are. What is our S term? What's our P term? What's our M term? Now, fortunately, this is always given to us. If we know the conclusion and the arguments are put into proper standard form, the S term of the conclusion is always our sub, is always our S term. So, in the case of some business owners are not CEOs, the subject is business owners, and the subject for our conclusion is our S term. So, business owners is the S term. In the case of the conclusion, the predicate term, in this case CEO, is our P term. So, CEO is our P term. What about the remaining term? What about M? Well, as always, the middle term is the term that occurs in both premises, but not in the conclusion. And, of course, in this case, it would be wealthy people. Now, in diagramming, we'll begin by diagramming premise one, which is some business owners are not wealthy people. And this involves diagram with an X, because, in logic, the X stands for at least one, and so some is represented by an X. Now, we place the X here. We're saying some S are not M, but we're also saying some S are also not P, which is not what our first premise says. If we place the X here, then we're saying some S are not M, but also saying that some S are P, which is not what premise one says. So, what we have to do is what's called floating the X. So, to symbolize this, we'll place an X there and an X there. And then draw the basic line between them, symbolizing that the X is floating. So, this indicates that we don't know exactly where the X is. The X could be here, could be there, but we don't know for sure. So, we have to float it. Then we go to premise two, which is all CEOs are wealthy people. In this case, CEO is our P term, and wealthy people is our N term. So, we have to show that all of the P's are N's. So, in this case, since we're doing an all claim, we shade. So, first we shade here, showing that all P's are N's. Now, the question that arises, what do we do about this area? Because this is the S circle, so what do we do? Well, when diagramming for all claims, you diagram all of it. So, if we're saying all CEOs are wealthy people, we're saying all P or M. If we stopped here, we'd be saying all P or M, except those that happen to be S. So, we have to diagram, we have to shade over this. Now, what about the X that's floating there? What happens to it? Well, when we fill this area in, we effectively destroy the X. So, the X is gone. And so, the X from here is driven out, and it lands there. So, once we diagram it that way, we fill up these two circles, although kind of poorly in the case of this diagram, but take my word for it, the X is gone. And then, so the X is here. It lands in the S circle, outside the P and the M circles. Now, the third step is we look to see if we can read the conclusion off the diagram without changing it in any way. So, what we need to do is we need to see that some S are not P, because S is business owners, P is CEOs. In other words, what we need there is an X in the S circle, but not in the P circle. Looking at that, we see that that is the case, and we see the argument is valid. And so, the argument passes the test and is a valid argument.